Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you how you can create your very own custom function in Microsoft Excel using something called Lambda. This is brand new functionality that's hot off the press and it's currently available to Office Insiders. Why would you ever want to write your own custom function? Well, maybe you have a super long formula in Excel. Maybe you end up copying and pasting it all over your sheet, or maybe other people are working on your sheet, and maybe sometimes your formula gets messed up. Instead, you can turn your formula into a function. You could give it a pretty name and then you could call it wherever you are in your workbook. Now, I know it might sound a little bit complicated, but today I'm going to break it down. I'll show you step-by-step step how you can use it. So hopefully it's super clear. First off, I wanna show you how you can get Lambda and then we're gonna jump through a few examples. All right, let's jump on the PC and let's get started. If you wanna follow along, I've included a link in the description to this workbook that I'm going to be using. Also, to be able to use Lambda, you need to be a Microsoft 365 subscriber and you also have to be enrolled in the Office Insider program. And don't worry, it's easy to enroll in the program. And you could even do so from directly in Microsoft Excel. Head up to the file menu in the top left-hand corner and then on the left-hand side, go down to the option that says Account. And here you'll see an option for Office Insider. As an Office Insider, you get access to functionality before the general public and you can provide feedback to Microsoft. Here, if we click on Office Insider, we can change the channel. Now, there are two different channels. There's a current channel and there's also a beta channel. The beta channel gets access to functionality first, but it might be a little less stable. The current channel gets access to functionality a little bit later and things will be a little bit more stable. Lambda is currently only available to the beta channel, so if you wanna test it out, click on beta channel and then click on OK. Now that we have that out of the way, you should now have access to Lambda within Microsoft Excel. And before we jump into how to construct our own function, I wanna take a moment talking about the difference between a formula and a function. First, a formula is an equation that you can design in Microsoft Excel. So here I have a list of all of these different cookie types and I have a quantity associated with them. And I wanna add all of these up. I can use a formula to do this. To to enter a formula, I'll simply type in the equal sign and I could click on the different values and I can add them up. Once I go through, I could hit enter and I see that the sum of all of these is 30. Now this is just a basic formula. Instead, I could also use functions. So how does a function different? Well, a function is a predefined calculation. So let's say I wanted to do the same thing where I sum up all these different values. I could use the sum function in Microsoft Excel. The sum function is one of the most popular functions functions. Here I enter sum, I'll open parentheses, and I could simply highlight all of these different input values, close parentheses, and then press enter. Here, the function gives me the output of 30. It'll take all those different values, add them up, and then spit out a value. So that's the main difference between a formula and a function. With Lambda, I can create my own function, very much like the sum function. And I could call it the Kevin function, I could call it buy cookies, and really I could give it whatever name I want. The great thing about creating a function is I could then call that wherever I am in my workbook and I don't have to know any coding to do it. So how do we create our own function? Well, let's jump onto the next worksheet and let's create a function. This brings us to the next sheet and we are going to construct our very own custom function. This sheet contains order information for the Kevin Cookie Company. Here you could see some of the fine retailers who carry our delicious cookies. You could also see how many boxes of cookies they ordered and you can see the price that they pay. And remember, these are wholesale prices. To calculate the price, we simply take the number of boxes ordered and then we multiply it by $2.50. And I know the wholesale price is a lot cheaper than the retail price, but hey, we need to make a margin too. Now, I wanna turn this into a function. Right now, this is simply a basic formula. To turn this into a function, let's click into cell D7. And here, we're gonna use Lambda to create our very own function function. First, enter the equal sign and then let's type in lambda. Once we type in lambda, let's open the parentheses. Down below, we'll see a helpful hint that helps us construct our function. Right now, it says enter either a parameter or a calculation. Basically, a parameter is the value that we want to feed into our function. In this case, for this function, I want it to be the number of boxes ordered. So for the parameter, I'm going to call this boxes ordered. Next, I'm going to 
to insert a comma, and now I can once again enter another parameter. So let's say I wanted to pass two values in, but in this case, I'm just simply passing in boxes ordered, so I'll leave the parameter as just one item. Next, I need to enter a calculation. And for the calculation, I'm going to take the boxes ordered. Here I could see a helpful hint that this is one of the variables that I could use. I'll click on boxes ordered, and then I wanna multiply this by $2.50. Next, I'll close my parentheses and I could hit enter. Now it's not working yet. Simply what we're doing on this sheet is we're gonna test to make sure that the formula works as we expect. I'll click on this again and here I could see my formula. Next, I'm going to enter another parentheses and now I could enter a sample value in. So I wanna enter 250. This is gonna be the parameter that I pass in. So basically when I enter the 250, this will go in as the boxes ordered value. Next, I'll close the parentheses and I'll hit enter. Here I can see now that my function will return 625 and that matches exactly with what my formula says over here. So I know that my lambda function is now working properly. Now, I wanna be able to call this function wherever I am on the sheet. So how do we do that? Well, let's get rid of this test value at the end. So I'm going to remove the 250. Next, let's highlight this function right here and let's cut it. I'm gonna press Control X. You could also simply do Control C. Now that I've cut the formula, let's go up to the top ribbon and let's click on the tab that says formulas. Once we click on formulas, there's an option in the middle called the name manager. Let's click on that. This opens up the name manager and next let's click on new. This opens up a control where I can now create the name of my new function. I'm going to name this cookie price. Down below, I can define the scope of this function. I could call the function from all the different sheets within my workbook, or I could specify an individual sheet. I want it to be available everywhere, so I'll select workbook. Down below, I can also type in a comment for my function. This is a good practice, especially if you have a lot of functions and maybe you won't remember what these different functions do, type in a good descriptive comment comment. Down at the very bottom, this is where we are going to paste in the Lambda function that we just created. I'll paste that in and we are all set to go now. Next, let's click on OK. This brings me back to the name manager and I can now see that there is a new function called cookie price. Next, let's click on close. I'm now back on my sheet and instead of entering a formula to calculate the price, I can now use a function. In cell D7, I'm going to type in equals and now I could type in cookie price. Here I see now that there's a new function called cookie price. When I click on this, I can now open the parentheses and once again, the value that I wanna feed in is the number of boxes ordered. I could click on boxes ordered as the input value to this function. Next, I'll close the parentheses and hit enter. Here you can see that the function returns the value 625. So it's exactly the same as this formula, except this is now a function that's returning this value. Here I could go down and I can expand the function to all these different rows and here now I see the cookie price. Now in that example, it was pretty basic and you probably wouldn't create a function for something like that. But now we're gonna get a little bit more complex. Now my pricing analysts at the Kevin Cookie Company have told me that we need to offer some discounts to encourage people to order more. So here we came up with this discount strategy. If you order a lot of cookies, so more than 150 boxes, we'll give you a 15% discount. If you order a medium quantity, let's say more than 100, but maybe less than or equal to 150, we'll give a 10% discount. Otherwise you get no discount. 11.7 convenience stores, you gotta order more boxes if you wanna get a discount. 21 boxes just isn't going to cut it. To be able to support this discounting strategy, I really had to brush up on my Excel skills. When I click in cell C7, here you can see the function that I entered to be able to figure out what the price is. Here I have an if function, and then I follow it by a nested if function, and we finally get the price that we charge the retailers. Now for every single row here, I enter the function again and again, and it's really prone for error especially if I have some of my employees come in, I really don't have confidence that this function will stay as it is right here. Instead, I'd like to create a simple function where they could simply type in the boxes ordered and it'll spit out the price. So once again, let's use Lambda to turn this into an easy to use function. To do that, first, let's click into the formula that we wanna use and I'll simply highlight this and then I'm going to copy it. Next, I'll click on escape. Next, let's go over to cell D7 and once again, we are going to use Lambda. 
To use lambda once again, let's type in equals and then type in lambda. Next, let's open the parentheses and once again, we need to pass in a parameter. Once again, my parameter is the boxes ordered. For now, to simplify, I'll simply call this boxes. Next, I'll insert a comma and now we need to type in the calculation. Now, I already copied the calculation, so let's paste that in. I've now pasted in the calculation and I need to add one more parentheses to close this out. Now, one thing you'll notice with my function that I copied or the if function, it uses a reference to cell B7. Now I want it to refer to boxes instead. This is the variable. So in place of B7, let's paste in boxes or the parameter throughout this calculation. I've now pasted boxes in all throughout here. Once again, I have my closing parentheses and this all looks good. Now, just like we did before, let's test this to make sure it works properly. I'm gonna insert another parentheses and here just to test it, I'll enter 250 boxes boxes just to make sure it works out to the same price. I'll type in 250, close parentheses and hit enter. Here now I can see that the price comes out exactly the same. So that shows that my Lambda function here is working properly. I'll remove the 250 and then hit enter. And now let's click into here. And once again, I'm going to copy this and now let's create our function. Once again, to create a function, let's go up to formulas on the top ribbon and then let's click on the name manager. This opens up the name manager and let's click on new. For the name, let's type in cookie price with discounts. Once I type in the name, I'll leave the scope to workbook and I'll type in a quick comment. Down below, let's highlight this value and now let's paste in our Lambda function that we typed in in the sheet and then we could click on OK. I now have a new function name called cookie price with discounts. Next, let's click on close. Here now back on the sheet, I can now enter equals and I'll start typing in cookie price and here I see with discounts, I can click on that. I could open the parentheses, click on 250 boxes, close parentheses and hit enter and here you see my function is working perfectly. So this is a lot easier. Here when I click into here, I see this big nasty long function. Instead when I click over here, I see this very beautiful clean function now. It says cookie price with discounts. Here I could see that I pass in 250 and and it simply gives me that result. I have pretty high confidence that my employees can carry this out. Along with trusting my employees to be able to carry this out now, let's say that maybe my pricing guide has changed. So instead of giving a 10% discount, maybe we wanna experiment with, let's say a 12% discount. Now, if I had just used all these individual formulas, I'd have to go back and I'd have to enter the reference or at least update the reference. With this Lambda function, it's easy. I simply update the function and then any place where I call the function is automatically updated. I could simply click on the name manager. I could go back to the cookie price with discounts and here I can see the discount. So here the discount is 0.9, I can now change that to 0.88. Now that I have my new discount in place, I can click on close. My function is now updated and it now factors in the new discount amount. So these are two massive benefits of using functions. You make it easier for others to use. It's easier to parse when you're reading through perhaps complicated functions. And as another side benefit, if you need to make updates to it, any place that uses that function also gets updated automatically. Hopefully you're starting to see some of the power you get from Lambda. Now, before you think that's it, Lambda does have a few more tricks up its sleeve. You can also do recursion with Lambda. So what does that mean? Well, just like in programming, you have the concept of looping. To make it real, I wanna provide a practical example. At the Kevin Cookie Company, we've recently been brainstorming some new cookie names. And at the Kevin Cookie Company, when you look at our menu, we refer to things like chocolate chip cookie or snickerdoodle. We thought we might try to spice things up by making the names more exciting. Instead of calling a cookie just chocolate chip, well, let's call it double chocolate chip. What's the difference? It's really just a chocolate chip cookie. We also call snickerdoodle deluxe. We also threw sweet in front of sugar. Of course, sugar is sweet, but it sounds like just a more impressive name. And then we also have our infamous Sriracha Mint Supreme Cookie. One of our employees isn't a big fan and they tried to hijack our brainstorming activity by throwing numbers in the name. So rude of them. With Lambda and setting up a recursive function, I can remove those. So how does this work and how would you logically do it? Well, let's say we were to take this text right here and I wanted to remove each number. Well, of course I could go through manually and remove 
remove each number, but let's say I had hundreds and hundreds of rows, I'd much rather use a function. So logically to remove the numbers, well, first off, I'll look for the number one. If I find number one in this text, I'll remove it. Once we've looked at number one, next we'll look at number two. If we find number two, we'll remove it. Once we've done that, then we'll go to three and we'll work our way all the way through nine. And then once we've removed or checked for all of these numbers, then we'll get the text. And so I wrote a function that does this. Next, we'll type in equals and then I'll simply type in clean name. Once I type in clean name, I'll open my parentheses and the input or the parameter is this text. And next I'll enter a comma and this is the text or the input that I want to exclude. So I'll select this, I'm gonna make it an absolute reference, close parentheses and hit enter. Now, nothing exciting happened because double chocolate chip had no numbers in it. Here though, when I pull it down, once I get down to the Sriracha Mint Supreme Cookie, you see that it removed all of the numbers. Previously in Microsoft Excel, this would have been extremely difficult to do. So using recursive functions, I can now do this, or calling a function within a function. Okay, so that's pretty impressive but how does that actually work? If we scroll down the page here, we'll see the lambda and let's walk through this to see how it works. Here, I once again, just like we've been doing all along, we enter equals lambda and then I pass in the cookie name. So here, for example, we're sending in Sriracha Mint Supreme Cookie. Next, I also enter all of the characters I want to exclude. So those are my two parameters that I'm passing in. So in this case, it would be one through nine. Next, for the calculation, I'm going to enter in an if statement. Here, there's an if, and first it does the logical test. So are there any more characters to exclude? So it's looking up here, and yes, we still have one through nine that we have to check. So that comes back false. So in this case, if it was true, we just pass back the cookie name, but let's say with the Sriracha Mint Supreme cookie, it's false. There are more characters to exclude. So then it goes to the next portion of the if statement. And here, once again, I call the clean name function. So basically I'm calling the function within the function. And then here within clean name, what it does first is it says, okay, well, let's first check the cookie name and let's see if the number one appears. If the number one appears, it removes it from the name. Then for the second portion of it, once it checks for one, well then we've already checked one, so it removes one from the set. That's in essence how this function works, and it simply goes through one, two, three, all the way through nine. If I scroll down the page even more, here we could see an example step-by-step step how it's working or how the recursion works. So here it's gonna go through multiple times. In fact, it's gonna go through 10 times to clean up this text. So for the first cookie name here, we have four, five, three, and one appear. And so what it'll do first is, well, on the first iteration, it'll check for the number one. So here it removes one, and now we have two through nine remaining. In the next step, it'll check to see if two appears. And if it finds two, it'll remove it, but there is no two, so then it simply works its way through all the numbers until the name is clean. Once a name is clean, there are no more characters to exclude, so now it simply passes back the cookie name. So this is just a very simple example of how you could use recursion in Microsoft Excel. And this is something that hasn't existed in functions before in Excel, so this really gives you a lot of power. All right, well, that was a quick look at how you can create your very own custom function in Microsoft Excel. Let me know down below in the comments, is this a function that you see yourself using? If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. To see future videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And also, if you wanna see me cover any other topics in the future, leave a note down below. All right, well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.